the joy for us is seeing her go out and perform on the biggest of big stages and knowing that she's one of our own. She's Kentucky's own Marlena Van Hoos, and this is where she got her start. Our national anthem is performed by Kentucky's own Marlena Van Hoos. Gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. with cytomegalovirus on June 25, 1995. Cytomegalovirus, or CMV, causes me to be totally blind. The doctors gave me only one year to live, and God healed my body from the virus at a year old, and that's when it all began. So she started playing the piano probably a little before two years old. Got her little play toy. Yeah, she keyboard. was. Well, she started playing a little tiny keyboard at uh, at my mom and dad's house. She was playing "Jesus Loves Me" or "Mary Had a Little Lamb." Yeah, yeah, Mary Had a Little Lamb. She was humming "Jesus Loves yeah. Me" before she talked. We had a cassette tape recorder. I had uh, some Christian, child's Christian music on it, and uh, "Jesus Loves Me" was on. A bunch of kids singing and. And there was other songs that she wasn't interested in the other songs. She wanted Jesus Loves Me on that. So I put it in her crib with her. And piano was right there behind you. And uh, she'd get up there and she'd, if she never banged on it, you know, like some little kids do. They, she just, she was like. Playing it. Well, she was lis listening to the sounds. Like she could remember which key made what sound. Nobody in our household knows how to play the piano. I mean, she was, teach she was listening to cassette tapes and mimicking the music on a, you know, out-of-tune keyboard at three. I remember her sitting like this up on the keyboard, and I mean, the, the ivories were coming off of it. I mean, it was, the she just had to, she she'd have to lift up some of the keys because they get stuck going down, and she's blind. I mean, she's just playing. Uh, I barely played Mary Had a Little Lamb on it. She started complaining it was out of tune. Oh, yes. She knew it was out of tune. She's got perfect pitch. <laughs> we had a guy come and tune it, and he started playing the boogie woogie on one end, and she started playing it on the other end. She wasn't about three years old, that old. We were all in awe. You know, we just couldn't hardly believe it. So she just did things that you didn't think a normal kid would do, you know, and uh, like she was. Well, we had two kids, and neither one of them could do it. No. <laughs> we figured out she was interested in music and playing. I tried to find somebody to teach her, give her lessons on piano, but they said she had to be able to read, but 
so I couldn't find nobody to teach her. With her visual impairment, her being blind, she can't uh, she can't read the notes and she can't read uh, the tempo like uh, like sighted people can. Well, I have to record on my uh, digital tape recorder a song that I've not I've never sang before. Sometimes it is hard, and sometimes it's sometimes I could just pick it up. If she hears it hears it played, she can she can pretty much uh, get the tempo and the rhythm and everything, and and she can play it. But finding a teacher to teach her with the hand over hand techniques that that uh, that she would have to use, uh, we never could find a teacher that was willing or able to do that with her. I focus on my abilities rather than my disabilities. And somebody says I was self-taught, but I'm God-taught. When Marlena was three years old and we lived in our old house, she would lay in that kitchen floor. I don't know what it was about the floor, but she would just sing these old hymns that her great-grandparents taught her. And uh, you know, I put her in the first talent show when she was six years old. <laughs> got her into everything I could to get her out there because I wanted people to, you know, hear this voice. But as parents, we just thought, you know, could she really sing or just we were being, you know, it's our daughter. <laughs> just being parents. Yeah. And I remember asking the teacher at school, I took Marlena to her and I, I said, well, can you tell me if she knows how to sing harmony? And so they did it together and she said, uh, yeah, she can sing harmony. <laughs> Marlene has started singing the anthem probably around six years old, and I guess she's heard it on the radio or TV, and she just always sang it with heart. She knows who, who wrote it. Francis Scott Key has written the national anthem. The funny part is she even knows, uh, knows where they got the tune uh, for the Star Spangled Banner, and, and it kind of cracks her up a little bit. At the end of it, he, he pinned down to the tune of To an Acreon in Heaven, which is an old drinking song, a British drinking song that is not supposed to be sung by ladies. And the road gets John Stafford Smith has gotten the melody to the Star Spangled Banner, and it became our national anthem in 1931, and it all went from there. So when I sing it, it has to pay respect to our nation. And I sing it like I really mean it. In the home of the brave. She was 16 years old. We got her, they had a gospel talent show at Renfro Valley. I thought, well, this would be a great opportunity for her. So we got her in it, and she had an original song. She won the competition, and the winner got to open up for the Crab family. And then when they were on their uh, break, she asked Jason Crab if she could sing one song with them. And he said, sure. So she sung, Don't You Want to Go? And then they were blown away by her singing. And then after that, a lady named Candy Combs got a hold of us. I was there working with an artist out of Nashville. That Nashville artist, who has Kentucky connections, Kentucky roots, he was trying to get a Kentucky game. So I knew who to contact and who to work through, but I was not getting anywhere in assisting him performing. So I was like, as just kind of a secondary was, I was like, well, let's let Marlena do it. I remember I got we get lots of dozens of you know emails, voicemails, but I had gotten an email and then I got another email about the same girl and, it, and this time it was from um, Lauren Mink. I met Marlena at the Special Olympic State Games over in Richmond, Kentucky. Um, we were listening to her at the opening ceremonies 
and my head just sort of whipped around. I was like, who is this girl? And here she was singing the national anthem, uh, and she also sang um, My Old Kentucky Home. And it was beautiful, and it was loud and big, and I've always been really pulled towards big voices. Um, growing up, that's who I listened to. I listened to Martina and Trisha Yearwood. And so when I saw it was coming from this little girl, I was just like, oh my gosh. And at that point, I was kind of like, okay, uh, we need to take another look here. When she's getting ready to sing in the UK women's basketball game, of course, I'm a big UK fan, and my legs were shaking. <laughs> I was nervous. She was just calm as she could be. People had tried to prepare me for it, and, and this um, small package comes out and just the biggest voice you've ever heard. So, I mean, it was just unbelievable, and it's uh, unforgettable the first time you hear her. You can almost just hear kind of this, just like, oh, like from everybody. I don't know that I've heard anybody do any better for the national anthem. You know, it's a, it's a proud papa moment to see your child uh, perform on a stage, you know, as big as that. We found out about the video through uh, people texting us because it was on social media, but we didn't have Facebook then, so we really didn't know. And then not long after that, we got a phone call from the Brooklyn Nets wanting her to sing the anthem in uh, Brooklyn. Since the Brooklyn Nets game, I sang at other professional events, the NBA, uh, finals for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I sang at Madison Square Garden, which was crazy. And I sang at other sporting events like the Indiana Pacers and Phoenix Suns. And I sang for the Cincinnati Reds. Then I sang for the Home Run Derby. I sang at the San Diego Chargers game. And I also sang for the Cincinnati Bengals. Who day! And I have sang for the Cleveland Browns. She sings throughout the year with the two organizations she sings quite a bit with his best buddies. And it's an international organization founded by Anthony Kennedy Shriver. And uh, it helps people with disabilities get a job and be a mentor for them. And um, then the United by Music North America is an organization it's also for adults with disabilities who plays music or sings. So she does quite a bit with them. And through them, we have met several celebrities like Guy Fiera. Kyrie Irving, yeah. she's Kyrie met Irving. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, Charles Barkley, a couple supermodels. She got to meet the uh, Bella Twins. And they even had her on the show. Yeah. She made a cameo. <laughs> My favorite memory was her singing was with the Beach Boys because they're so well known and she got to sing with them and it was just awesome at a Best Buddies event in uh, California. And they said what at the end of it. Amazing. <laughs> she wasn't supposed to do that. She's met the president a time or two. President Trump, she's sung for him several times but she got to meet him in person two times. I was contacted by Governor Matt Bevin's office asking if I had contact information for Marlena and if she was my niece, and of course uh, she was, and, and uh, I got her, uh, got them hooked up with, with Dave and Teresa. And uh, Marlena was, uh, well, I was told Marlena was gonna be singing at uh, the Trump rally in Louisville. Uh, went to the rally and was able to, to hear Marlena sing. Then closer to uh, the end of the presentation, the end of the speech, she was being whisked away uh, so she could meet with uh, President Trump afterwards. And uh, my supervisor was escorting her back there through Secret Service and told me that she got to meet President Trump. She was in the back of the line. President Trump asked her to come on up. Uh, he was able to bypass all those that were standing in line. And she just 
candidly just looked at him and, and after a quick greeting said, The only thing that will make America great again is Jesus Christ and God's word with your help. He was just so amazed at her candidness and said that President Trump just sort of stepped back a second and, and was just stared at her for a moment and smiled and said, young lady, you're right, you're right. God is the most important thing to her and she wants other people to share in what she has. And she makes it a point to tell people that Jesus loves them everywhere she goes. They may not always put it on the news or on the TV when you watch it, but she's done it, I guarantee it. She does it every time. And that's why she does what she does. Yes, she loves singing. Yes, she loves playing the piano, and she's great at both. But her biggest thing is to tell the world about Jesus and to use this as a vehicle to spread his gospel. Well, Marlena, you know, goes all over the country, and, and she sings the national anthem, and she does very well at it. But she also sings other stuff. Like if we have a sporting game or something, we'll try to get her to church to sing maybe the next day or something. And she also does uh, conferences, galas. Yeah, she's not a one-hit wonder, as her brother says. She's multi-talented. Not only can she sing, she can play the keyboard and synthesizers and drum machines and all different types of instruments. I want to make my own mix myself. C A T S. Cats, 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 Kentucky, all together now, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, and it's back in the mix. She can do more than stand out in the middle center court and belt out the national anthem. I mean, after that one video went viral, she, we've traveled a whole lot, you know, it's monthly, we go I mean, sometimes every week. It is. Yeah, I mean, it's more, not. It's more weekly than it is monthly. And it's not just the weekends. It's through the week too, because a lot of people has you know conferences and stuff through the week. And so she made her first professional album in 2013. Her first album was was Do Right, and in 2019 she she released Never Give Up. She's come a long way from singing at the age of six and her 20, 2012 UK Hoops National Anthem appearance. She's been all over the place. So now when Marlene is here, she, she plays our congregational songs and does our special and then plays the invitational hymns. And she, uh, you know, she picks out the songs. She does, you know, all of that. You know, she's the first one to speak up when we have testimony time and to say anything during my sermons. I mean, that's just, Marlena's role is, is special here. She means a lot to this church. It's amazing to be her pastor because she, she teaches me, I think, as much as I teach her about faith and about how to follow God because she just, it's just simple for her. She just doesn't understand why people have so much trouble with it sometimes and why we struggle. <laughs> and, it, and that just blows me away and that just, it's, you know, that it should be that simple. I've had people lay hands on me and pray over me that God will heal my sight in this life. But you see, I do not want to see here on this earth. Jesus Christ will be the first face I want to see when I get to heaven. I can't remember how old she was, but I never did know that she didn't want to see. She was doing some genetic testing and took her to the doctor. He was, I think, looking in her eyes and she said, don't make me see. I just had tears in my eyes because <laughs> I didn't know that she'd felt that way. When I Savior is the first face of 
with Marlena's contentment in her in her disability, as we call it disability, it's, as the world would call it disability, it's her ability. God made her made her this way. He made her this way for for a reason, and we're seeing that reason. Mm -hmm. He he made her he made her to where she couldn't see, so that we could see him through her through the abilities of her voice and her playing skills and her boldness and her contentment in life. Being around Marlena, I don't know how anybody could not <laughs> give their life to the Lord, because I mean, that's all, that's all she's about. That's all she's ever was about. We're supposed to be out and, and spreading the gospel. And she's a little girl that has more faith than I or Teresa put together and she's just, she empowers us to, to stand up for what's right. If she can do it, why can't we do it? Yeah, when I was growing up, I was a very shy person. and I wouldn't talk to anybody unless they talked to me first. And being around Marlena, you know, who's not at all shy, she can talk to anybody. And so that has made me stronger person even to talk about God with somebody. Her faith's just amazing to me. I mean, when she performed at my father-in-law's church, <laughs> I mean, she, she got up there and she asked if she could say some words, and she ran with that. Like, we didn't know exactly what was gonna happen, but not only did she sing, but she just spoke from her heart, and it was so genuine, and I think that's why people love her. Marlena looks at Jesus like we look at one another. She talks to him, she walks with him, she is bold because, I mean, that's her friend. She knows him in such a manner and way better. I mean, I, I mean, I've accepted Christ as my Savior. I know that he is, his, his sacrifice has covered my sins and, and uh, I'm able to be righteous before God because of that. And I, and I try to be bold. I try to talk to my friends. I, I try to mention it to them. Yeah, you get some backlash on it and sometimes I cower away. And, and, and I'm ashamed of that. You know, just, she don't care. She knows she's going to talk about her friend. And she wants everybody to be involved with that. And she wants to give him respect every time that, you know, it, it's, a, it's just a different, it's different talking to Marlene about it. I love Jesus. I talk about him because I am so glad he saved my soul and he's always been there with me through the good times and through the bad, through thick and thin. And I just want other people to see Jesus in me because he is the one that blesses me beyond measure and he's the one that will watch over everyone, especially those who are lost. They need him more than anything else in this world before it's eternally too late. She wants people to know that with God, nothing is impossible. She always tells people to reach for your dreams, but she knows that she would never be able to accomplish what she has done and do what she is doing without God. He's the very best thing ever ha ever happened to me and my family. It's inspiring and it's uh, what uh, our faith should be like. It's an example to, to follow and we're all created very uniquely and we're all given a unique set of gifts. And uh, I think something that you can take out of what Marlena is saying is you know, we, we need to be grateful for what we have. And we need to be grateful for the gifts that God's given us and we need to every day try to use those gifts to the greatest extent of our ability that we've been given. And I think that's something that she uh, has done, is a great example of, and uh, she's an extremely inspirational person. This is some of the comments that I've printed out that people have left. We really enjoy the ones from the military. Hello, I am a nurse in the U.S. Navy Reserve Nurse Corps. I have heard the national anthem sung well, but as beautifully and with as much heart as you sing it, I can hear your strength and patriotism in your voice, as well as your love of Christ. When training can make the days long, hearing the national anthem sung as only you can sing it is a strong reminder of why we train to defend this country. Thank you for your strength and heart. Here's another one that was really inspiring to us, was you have inspired me to live again. You are a gift from God. Thank you. And then uh, when Marlena did the NASCAR race, uh, the contact lady that I have, she sent me an email and she said, I'm not sure if you've seen some of the tweets that were posted directly after Marlena's singing of the national anthem a couple weeks ago, 
but Brad Keselowski and Daryl Waltrip loved her. Marcus Smith, who runs SMI, which owns Kentucky Speedway, was very impressed, as were some of the big names in NASCAR media, like Doug Rice. Brad Keselowski is the best national anthem of the year at Kentucky Speedway. Great job, Marlena. Marcus Smith was talking to Daryl Waltrip and Keskalowski, and if you like the answer, let me straight to Kentucky Speedway. I just found her website, amazing story. I need to put her website, littlemarlane.com on there. You know, I see the impact she has on our members. Um, many Sundays she's brought them to tears. One of the last Sundays, she sang a song called Reckless Love, and it let me and my daughter have a moment because I come back and I sit in the pew and she sits with me. And we were singing and she, she said, reckless? And I said, yeah. She said, I thought it said breakfast. <laughs> and, and then I got to explain to her what reckless means and why God's love is reckless. So it just, it gave us this huge moment with my six-year-old. And that's what she does. That's, that's how God uses Marlena. I wouldn't have her any other way. I'm truly blessed. I'm glad that God seen me fit to be the father of, of, uh, of such this. an angel. <laughs> <laughs> and I've told her several times, I said, Marlena, so if you was living in the Bible days when they was making the Bible, I said, you would probably have a book in the Bible. <laughs> the Book of Marlena. <laughs>